So where do we go from here? Like, what is your message? Like, we're, we're, I mean, obviously, you know, with, with, with the presidency and, 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 the, and the state of, of race, what it is, people bother me when they say it's not about everything. A lot of stuff is centered around race. Where do you think we go from here as a culture? As a, as, well, as I, do, I do have hope. And uh, even with all the ugliness that I see every day, there are a couple reasons why I have hope. Like, no matter how ugly things get in the world, and we're talking about a world that can that can get deep and dirty and ugly. We're talking about a world that had the Holocaust, right. a world that had the transatlantic slave trade. Right. We're talking about a world, like when people say, Sean, can it get worse? My answer is always, no oh hell yeah. No question. It can get a lot worse. But anytime things have gotten horrible and ugly all throughout history, I'm a historian by training. My undergraduate and graduate degrees are in history people always bounce back. Societies always recover, no matter how ugly, how dirty, how horrible, how desperate things can get. The pendulum, it may swing one way, but it will always swing the other way. Now, what I need to explain to people is that that pendulum illustration has limitations. It doesn't, people swing it back. And so whatever we're gonna see next in this world, like when we think about slavery in America that lasted for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. people fought to end that. Like it didn't just end. Right. Like it didn't just say we're done. Like right. there was a civil war for that. Mm -hmm. And so whatever it is, if it's voting rights, if it's civil rights, whatever future it is we want to see in this country, we will only see what we fight for. And I try to explain to people, whatever future it is that we want for this country, we have to organize ourselves into it. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. And I wish it. I wish it just things got better naturally, but that's just not how it goes. Right. And um, you think we're heading in the right direction? No, no, I don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I was quick. I'm confident that we're not. I'm actually. I'm not an alarmist. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, I think these next couple years could be real rough for us. Uh, what, what you're going to see next? Next month and over the next two or three months, the impeachment of the president is going to happen. Those proceedings, uh, this isn't theoretical, the, the impeachment proceedings are going to move forward. I believe the president will be impeached in the House, and I think that could get real volatile. Um, I think the election could be very volatile and dangerous. I, I, I could imagine a scenario where Donald Trump loses the election and decides not to leave the office mm. because he thinks it's not official or not legitimate. Mm. Um, we're already in a scenario where the Congress has subpoenaed, a legal subpoena has subpoenaed people to testify and they just said no. Like there are people in prison right now for failure to comply to a subpoena. You go to jail for that. And so we're already at a showdown I think the United States right now is in a much more fragile place than we understand. I agree. Um, I'm, con I'm deeply concerned. And I, um, I hear not just the president, but others even talk about civil war and violence. And that type of stuff, it concerns me, man. I mean, it makes me, uh, it makes me concerned about what's next. And, and I don't know. I think... Um, I think things will get worse before they get better. And, and I don't think, I don't think all of our problems are just solved even by this one election. Right. Um, in Donald Trump's defense, many of our greatest problems in this country, he didn't create them. Right. And so even if he does, even if he does lose, even if he does leave the office peacefully, there's still mass incarceration. He didn't build that. You know, there's still issues of poverty and other things. So now I'm, I'm, I'm deeply concerned about where we go next. And I say that as somebody who studies it day in and day out, um, I think we've grown a bit used to things that we probably should never have grown used to. And there's some things that have been normalized in this country that, that are deeply problematic. So I'm worried about these next few months. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm watching carefully, but I'm, I'm not even quick to get nervous, but it's a it's a weird time. Yeah, it's gonna be real touchy. Yeah, it's um, I I'm friends with several people who are in Congress, 
and even Congress people understand that this a we're walking on thin ice right now. Like say, say those people who have been subpoenaed, say Congress then threatens to jail those people. But say those people then say, well, you're not taking me to jail. What's gonna, what's gonna happen here? Like how, what, what's, are we then gonna force them into and cart? Like, I don't know. Like even people in Congress know, it's like, it's a- uh, It's uncharted territory. Yeah, I mean, Typically, you get a subpoena, you go, show up. Yeah, and if you don't, it's simple, you go to jail. Yeah, and so we're testing those norms, and, and so for the first time, we realized like, oh, there wasn't really a system in place to enforce the rules on the presidency and on the administration. And uh, daily, Trump and the administration are pushing those boundaries in a way that I think are going to be hard to dial back in one way or the other. What would be your message to the youth to get out there and, 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 and you know, uh, every, it's cool to talk about it. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about outside of social media to talk about it and do yeah. this and do that. How can they be? What would be your message to make them be a part of it? You know, really make their voice count. What would you say to the kids? Well, you know what, man? Th today's generation of young people are already way more active than we were when we no were question. kids. No I, I was explaining to my kids just last night, when I was in high, there were no activists at my high school. Like, I didn't even know that was an option. Right. Like, you could care, but you, there, I, there were no activists at my high school. Like, that's not how we saw the world. And today, even my daughter who's in college or in high school, they see themselves as activists, and not just because they're my children. Like, he, here in New York, my kids, even my kids in elementary and middle school have been to marches and protests. Like, we didn't, we didn't do that growing up. Mm -mm. So this generation, I, I trust them more than I trust our generation. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they understand the danger a, a little more in part because they also and I don't even mean this as a knock, because they don't have to pay the bills, because they don't have all the responsibilities as adults, they get to see the world for, for all that it is and isn't in a way that's just very different. And so like there are days where I, there might be a protest in the city, but because I have a nine to five, I just can't go. Well, kids don't have that same burden in that sense. And uh, they're laying it all on the line, man. Like, I am, on most days, more inspired by them. And uh, I could tell you, I mean, there are, there are kids fighting for, uh, fighting against the climate crisis, fighting against police brutality, gun violence, that I would say are, they are the ones leading on it. In most rooms that I go in, I'm the old man in the room. <laughs> like, I've been in rooms I'm talking about with like the best leaders in the country. My In my brain, I haven't started thinking of myself as old yet. And I realized right away, it's like, oh, they think I'm old. Like people calling me Mr. King or Uncle Sean. It's like, oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and I realized it's like, you gotta think, how did you see somebody who was 40 when you were 18, 20, yeah. when you were 20? Old. Yeah, you saw, and so, I realize it's like, listen, these young people, I'm proud of them. They, in the 2018 election, they voted more than any young generation in American history. So they're not perfect. Um, I used to think when we were kids, I used to think that racism would pretty much die out when all the old racists died. But- They're teaching them at a young age. Nah, yeah. so, so even though I'm proud of young people, some of the worst racists in America now are teenagers young. and young adults. No question. Mm -hmm. And they're full on white supremacists and neo-Nazis. But don't know why. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't break it down if you sat they here with them and pushed you them nothing. Like, why don't you like? Right. Because my mom and dad told me, you know what I mean? Right. Like that shit. Will Sean King ever feel accomplished? Um, I don't know, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm always pushing it, you know. Um, I used to, there's a, a writer, Ta-Nehisi Coates. When I used to read Ta-Nehisi Coates stuff, I used to think he was super pessimistic. He used to talk about how things like racism and stuff would always be here. And I, as a young optimist, I would see that and be like, 
man, why is he so negative? And as I've gotten a little older, I've grown to think a lot of the worst parts of this country, they'll change their shape and form, but they'll always be here. So I think to the day I die, I'm going to always be fighting back against injustice. Um, you know, there are there are single battles that I hope we win. Today is Election Day around the country. There are a couple of candidates that I've been fighting for. And so I feel accomplished in a sense that um, there are some battles I hope we win. But um, one of my heroes is Harry Belafonte, who's now in his mid 90s and is still fighting for justice and change today. I hosted a conversation with him last year and he showed up with a Trayvon hoodie. Mm -hmm. about a 94 year old man mm -hmm. and uh, and I asked him about why he had on the hoodie and he said uh, as long as George Zimmerman is walking around I'm gonna wear this hoodie uh. and it's a 94 year old man uh -huh. and I saw that was like that's why I, I want to be the 94 year old man wearing the hoodie you know mm -hmm. I wish I wish we didn't need to wear the hoodie I wish I wish I wish I could work myself out of a job but I'm convinced that a lot of our problems are going to be here for a very long time. So um, it's it's a marathon. I know we all love Nipsey. And, Rest in peace. Um, <clears throat> I think part of what I think about when I think about Nipsey is also saying, hey, there's some things I'm going to fight for today, but there's some things I'm fighting for now knowing we won't see the fruits for 10, 20, or 30 years. Mm -hmm. And And as I get older, I'm able to see that a little more clearly. And so um, some systems are going to take a lifetime for us to see, see the change, for sure. Mm. Sean, man, we yeah. appreciate your time. Thank you all, man. Appreciate Thank you. you. Man, pleasure. Yeah, tell our, so tell, tell our audience where, we, where they can find you at. Sure. I mean, right now people can go to freerodneyreed.com, and that, that's where my mind is and where my heart is. As soon as I leave here, I'm checking on that and seeing what progress we've made. We're down to the wire with... 14 days to save this man's life. You can check me out at Sean King on every social media platform. I also have a daily news podcast called The Breakdown. I'm recording that. Just FYI, if anybody ever asks you to do a daily news podcast, say no. It's every day. It's hard, man. <laughs> oh, man, it's hard. It's a beast. It. Right. It's a, it is a grind. And so uh, I love it, but it's so hard to do. That's on every podcast platform. Check that out. We're talking about Rodney Reed's case yeah. every day for the next 14 days on there. Um, I have a book that's coming out. We just released the website today. It doesn't come out to April. The book's called Make Change. So you can go to makechangebook.com to check that out. And uh, I'm always building, always tinkering, always trying to empower people to make a difference. So I'm gonna keep on pushing. Hey, Rodney Reed, man. Yeah. If you had, last thing, yeah. a message to the world that would go around on the billboard, one word or a sentence, what would that be? Oh man, we, we know so much of so much of my mind is is about Rodney Reed, but um, I would I would probably say do something. Um, do something. So much so much energy is spent thinking about doing something, talking about doing something. Mm -hmm. um, you learn more from just getting out there and actually doing something. And, and so I tell people all the time, your issue does not have to be my issue. My issue doesn't have to be yours. So I'm fighting against police brutality and mass incarceration. Your thing might be something altogether different, but do something. And your something doesn't have to be mine, but you don't want to look back on your life and your good years wishing you had done something. So yeah, I would say do something. Get out there and do it.